Hello YouTube, Steve O'Trucker here. Hopefully the video isn't going to be too dark, even though uh, mm, the weather ain't brilliant today. Um, but I want to hopefully a reasonably quick video on about be, being a new truck driver. So let's say you've done your class one, you know, you're a class one new, fresh class one driver, you've done your rigid in your class one, and you're straight to being a class one driver. Or even a rigid driver, you know, After some of it will yards, be crossbred over. Like anything, when you get your first job, you'll probably be through agency, the likelihood, yes, you could get a full-time position with somebody, but quite often you find it easier to get, depending where you live in the country, a job on agency, but sometimes even with your first full-time employer, this will be your you know, sort of welcome to the industry. If you get tasks on your first, say you're with agency, you got to your first customer. And a lot of it lays on what type of agency you got. A lot of agencies will try and put you with work that is reasonably, you know, as long as you've told them you are new to, uh, new to truckings your first time, you know, they will sometimes start if you've got a good agency where possible that's a watch out so we're going up quite a steep hill at the moment as you can see it's pretty wet out there yeah it is quite daunting and it, it, yeah, the question is, is where do I start Is, uh, you know, you, let's say you arrived on uh, your first job, you know, you get there, you've got some class on the, say, on the curtain cider. You know, you arrive there, you go to the transport office, be generally the average case. It does vary, it's depend who you go work with. You know, there's lots of, there's tons of variables and there's loads of stories, loads of typical scenarios that I could run through. But you generally get there and they say, oh, you, you know, I'm with such and such agency, here to do such and such work today. Or, you know, it may change, I might say, yep, yeah, you're doing that, but you're on this different run driver. And don't refuse it, you know, just go with the flow, but I highlight to the company you're there that say, you know, honestly, if it's your first day, say it's your first day, because sometimes they will go, actually, We'll put you in so and so today instead. We'll move all of our other drivers onto that, and you know we do have a driver trainer here. Or we will put you on that, but we we might allow you know get one of the drivers to show you the ropes, you know what to do, maybe. Or if put you on the load that another driver's on as well. So if we've got two loads going to the same place, as I was say fortunate when I first started, that was sort of the case. I went. To do what was called the Tetley one, which obviously in the name Tetley was moving tea bags from like Middlesbrough way over to Manchester. Nice easy work, you know, it was a night job, and you'll go with another driver, you'll be in another truck, you'll be in the other, and you sort of tag team across, you know. That was a nice, nice job to do to get used to the work. But a lot of the times you'll get there and literally get the keys chucked at you when you're a new driver. Even when you do say, I'm a new driver, what do I do? Where's the, you know, how do I go and find the trailer? What, where's the trailer numbers, you know? All, and how do I fill this paperwork out? <laughs> you know, if you are, depend how fresh and new you are to the workplace as well. You know, there's systems on the truck that you may have not fully learned during your training as well. So you might not have learned how to use the air suspension properly and when to use it fully. You might have learned bits, but you might be very, you know, you're bound to make mistakes. And the key thing is, what I'm trying to get across through this video is always ask. If you see another driver you're not sure, ask. The key thing is ask. Ask for help where you need to. 
And if you get that funny feeling, ask. Phone your dispatcher. If you get good dispatch, the, they'll generally try and help you out as best as they can. And, you know, it's going to be nerve-wracking. There'll be points that you'll be going, what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, you'll be like, I'm all by myself. And, you know. But generally, depend what you're doing. Gen most likely you'll be doing general haulage of some sort. There will always be in the yard somewhere another driver, at least the shunter, normally. Be lurking about somewhere. So if you're not too sure how to get onto a certain type of bay or anything like that, you know. And even today, I ask sometimes, what's the best way into somewhere, you know, to the customer? Or if I'm on site and it looks a bit awkward, I sometimes ask the customer, how do other drivers get in onto there? Do they reverse in? Do they drive head in? You know, if you're not sure, ask. And, and it's the same with myself nowadays. Even after five years of trucking, class one vehicles, you know, I still ask. And yes, you will bump into the odd driver who do, will not want to help you whatsoever. He'll just walk off or go, find somebody else, mate. Not my responsibility. You know, you're a driver, mate. You know, you'll get that a lot. And the key thing is, is don't be scared. You will have to get confident at reversing, but that will come in time. What else? You know, and it is daunting when you go to a company that, and I've been to those companies, you know, two or three days driving experience at this stage. And I went to a company that literally chucked the keys at me and just some paperwork and said, off you go, mate. I asked what? No matter what you asked them, they weren't helpful. And, you know, I sort of went on with it. I got the job done, but just took my time. And that's the other thing. So take your time, don't rush. There'll be some jobs that, you know, especially doing multi drop work, you, first time doing it, you will feel highly pressurised. You'll be wanting to keep status schedule. You'll, even if you think you're sound, you sometimes, and this is a habit of doing multi drop sometimes, you set yourself goals and certainly when you're new that's not what you should be doing because you know you have built up the experience to work out what such and such customers like and sometimes you can't tell you, you know some customers that go that that's a that's a time time warp there you know you could be out within 15 minutes or you could be there for six hours <laughs> you know and yes again it's just ask, ask where possible, and even at these companies that you know you're dispatching or aren't helpful at, there normally will be drivers that might age you. So I remember that company chucking the keys and some paperwork. I wasn't too sure where the vehicle was. I was doing a bit of widget work that day, and I was like, "Where's the vehicle? I couldn't find it in the vehicle park." I was slightly panic going, "Have I been given the wrong keys?" Because it wasn't very clear on the key fob either what vehicle it was. And I checked the paperwork, nothing on the paperwork. You know, it's a multi drop us and the funny thing is that day is a perfect example because later that day I've done my multi drop tips I actually done all of them which you do do but sometimes you are given tasks for some companies that are just like you know unless you are really experienced and you know the area really well you know would be very tough for somebody who isn't very experienced or doesn't know the area extremely well But on this day, I got all my tasks done, and then I was told to go and collect some bricks. Bear in mind, I was in a, I think, 18, was it 18 ton or 17 ton. It was, wasn't a really heavy carrying rigid. You know, some limitations with this vehicle. So I thought I would be like a couple of lobs of bricks. Luckily, I had the common sense that there was another driver there, and it was a full load Arctic amount of bricks. I was like, there's no way I can fit all this on, not legally with weight and everything. So I phoned them up and they said, are you sure, are you sure? I mean, you could argue it and go, well, it was only about four miles away. You could slightly get it in, but, you know, if anything went wrong, you get caught, it's dangerous to start off with. It's just not worth it. Luckily, I had common sense and did buy in the pressure. Because they were putting the pressure on going, go on, put on, mate, you know, put as many on as you can. You know, then they suddenly said, oh, actually, just put, put on the heart, you know, X amount of packs, so I put X amount of packs on and it's just about legal, let's say. 
and we'll send an Arctic to collect the West. Which that's what it should have been happening. That, that was an Arctic load of bricks. You know, a full trailer's worth of bricks. Turn right. And you will get pressurised. I also done work for Tesco's and that was on my first agency work as well. And so it was alright, but there was sometimes you were put in a corner, and especially when you get a bad group of drivers around that are like sort of betting on you in a way. So I remember getting to driver's room. I'd done my I had to go down to an RDC to drop off and the original plan was to drop off there, collect a trailer and come back up to where I started and that, that would be it because it was night work. I uh, know I got a delivery, a multi, a double decker trailer up to Hexamank it was. And even then I was like going, this can't be right. That, yeah, it's going to take a while to tip that and, you know, but naively, I, you know, I did question it. And the problem is you had two or three other drivers saying, yeah, you'll be able to do it, it'll be fine. You know, but bear in mind, they didn't know how much driving I had done at this stage. You know, I was a bit worried because I was like, so I'm limited to 10 hours, I haven't opted out. You know, and that's one of the times that I did sort of give in to the pressure, but I did get rescued, fair enough. But you know, it didn't really need to happen that way. That was literally, you know, you will be trying to be ta taken advantage of, but I don't mean go into employer and literally stand your whole ground because bear in mind, you are new, you will be getting some of the tasks that you know. And that sometimes what happens with agency work is that you will go and do some more, not necessarily always unpleasant, but you do do some cushy tasks as well. But you do go to some employers that will use and abuse the agency. I'm not claiming Tesco's using and abuse the agency, but, you know, I'm just trying to highlight, even at the big boys, it can happen. I'm sure if any drivers see this video, they will, they will be able to tell countless you know, first time this, that, this happened. You know, first time you have a small mine accident. No, the first time, you know, you <laughs> hook up to the wrong trailer. I've done that, trust me. <laughs> it is quite hilarious So you think, how did he do that? Naively, I read the wrong number on the trailer and just wasn't fully thinking. And that's when I was a new driver, you know, I made that mistake. And you might think, how can you possibly ever do that? It can be done, let's say. And embarrassing enough, I will admit I have done that once. I must say, like, once, I've done that. But, I mean, once you've done it once, you do it. And then you come to securing loads. You know, and this is where it falls back to ask ask other drivers in your work that do it how do you secure this load if you're not sure how to secure what do you use do you use chains do you use straps i'm not going to go for a whole securing sequence here you know i wouldn't want to confusion and also the company you're working for if you're working agency or full-time check what their policy is if you go full-time you're more likely certainly with a big player and make and also small players as well be walked through what's asked of you at work, you know, how they want things done, if you have any questions about like load security, because it is a big thing. The other thing as a new driver, you'll be pre you'll be figuring out driver's hours and working hours and you know that'll be going around and around and around in your head. You'll be, you know, first time you use a paper taco machine and you know, and also first time using a, a digital taco, you know, equally, you know, you've been, you may have been shown a little bit when you're doing your training, you know, paper taco, but you might be a bit rusty, you might have not touched it for a few months, you know, <laughs> and that's your first time using a paper taco, you know, they're very rare these days, but they're still around. And uh, you know, first time when you use your digital taco, you'll be wondering, you know, you may have done some training, but you'll still be like flapping, oh, what should I do? Should I do that POA, break? Uh, when should I do that? Should I do it now? Or, you know, and a lot of it will be built up from experience, learning, just, and just be chill with it at the end of the day. You know, 
don't put yourself in the pickle unnecessarily. Take your time, think. If you're not sure, ask. You know, that's the full thing. I think, you know, think it through. If you're not sure, ask. There's no embarrassment. The biggest embarrassment is the driver who doesn't ask, who doesn't go, you know, and you think after something's happened, a mistake has happened, you, you think back going, only if I asked so-and-so, that could have been prevented. That bit of hassle could have been prevented. It may have added 15 minutes to your day, but it's better than having an accident or making a major mistake that could add hours on to your day. And potentially worse. You know, and going back to securing loads, you know, when you first time you have to secure a technical load or uh, depending on what work you do, I haven't done all the securing work myself, you know, so I still have a lot to learn if I were to go on that front. You know, I haven't done any tarping, I hope you admit. I'll stick my hand up, I've not done any tarping. I've done a little bit of chain work. I've done flats, but that's mainly with a little bit of chain and ratchet strapping for what was needed. Now, I haven't done any uh, overly abnormal. I've done some, you know, odd loads now and again. You know, done some events. I've done setting up barriers, so the truck moving along with people strapped in, in the back of the trailer, placing out barriers for an event. I've done that. And obviously I've done done tanker work. You know, what else have I done? Containers, curtains, uh, box, uh, some fridge. I've done the bulk of stuff, but not any really of the specialist stuff in terms of you know sheeting, strapping, wide that uh, you know, large or abnormally large, and all that. I mean, you could argue tanker work is kind of specialist, yes, to a degree. Yes, I have done ADR work as well, not a titanic amount of it, no, but I've done enough to know roughly how it all works. And yet again, if you are doing ADR work for the first time, just take as it comes, take it steady think about your training you know but don't try and overthink things and you will naturally will be overthinking a lot of things like you'd be always one panicking about time you know time between a and b time to get offloaded time on the break time you know in the delay you know so on and so forth worrying about certainly if you're doing day work getting back home and you know what time I'm back will I get this load there on time you know, will I meet all my drops if you do multi-drop work? You know, just go with the flow, you know. Go in the order of your work. If you're not sure, you feel like it's taking a long time, always phone dispatch up. Another big piece of advice there, keep the office informed. If you think you'll be on time, let them know. If you've been at a customer probably more than an hour, let them know. That's a general rule of thumb. If you've been sat at a customer more than an hour, let the office know. Or what they have told you to tell you. Sometimes some companies want you every half an hour, but general rule of thumb, every hour. Unless told different. You know, so you phone up on your first hour and say, oh, that's fine, driver. You know, if nothing happens in two hours, then give us a bell. You know, just sit with it, chill. You know. Don't let the job get to you. Because be, as I said, when you first start driving, there will be an awful lot rushing through your head. You know, excitement, ner you'll be nervous, anxious, you know, not sure, everything. You know, you should be learning a lot. You know, it was not just through your training, you'll be learning. You know, you. as soon as you start work, day one to your last day of work, you'll be learning. So it's an SUV sort of racing down the road. I, I know I don't have the frontal camera game for this, so. But 
I'll probably add the odd thing through the video just to you know, make it not so. <laughs> or I might do it when I was put, put the video I done the other day on, on the background. Yards, turn left. But we'll see. See what I can do. But yeah, I mean, if you have any questions, post down below. The main point of this video is. go then never mind <laughs> yeah um as said the main point of this this video is just get across hopefully mainly aimed at the new drivers or potential new drivers you know people who are interested in guess becoming a heavy goods driver dri and trust me this is not designed to put you off it's just to hammer home a few key points believe it or not and as i've already said ask you know, take, don't rush. Don't allow yourself to be pressurized to a degree. And you know, just take your time, you know, be professional, be polite, be open-minded. I know this video is just, you know, to an experienced driver, it's basically like saying experienced driver to suck eggs, you know, I know it might be a bit bland, but as I said, it would be quite nice to hear off some of the experienced drivers, some of your stories down below maybe, in the comment section, any advice you would give to a, uh, a new driver. I mean, I haven't probably covered the whole spectrum of advice. There probably is a lot more to give. And this is not on the fly, but, you know, just generally how general things go. I've tried to use a few examples of when I started. I'm sure there's way worse that's happened to people. You know, I've been probably quite fortunate. And it's not the worst. You know, a lot of my first employers, you know, it was fun time, some of the work. As I said, didn't they technically run? That was... Even though it was night work, it was actually a very nice job to do. Nice and chill, a load out, tip, and return the trailer back to where you collect it from and back to the depot. Happy days. Um, I said the key thing is it's a bit like anything. it's a bit like if you learn an automatic and you're given your first gear truck just ask I know that leads to the other question if you are about to go for your truck training would you go automatic or manual that's optional that's down to you I learned on the manual personally Not that I opted to go to a centre that had auto or manual, I only found out and I hopped in, but you know, I didn't allow that to phase me. Open it, automatic might make it a bit easier, maybe, maybe. But when you've gone for a whole week of training with the instructor, when you got manual, depend on the, you as a person, you know, generally, you know, you should be with the, the gear changes. And when I learned, I had a really iffy gearbox. A really iffy gearbox on, on the truck I learned on. I mean, you had to literally yank the gears into gear. It's probably one of the worst ones that you can probably uh, do your tests on. <laughs> but my exa oh, maybe I was fortunate, maybe my, you know, Max Amini knew the truck. And he even said to me at the start of the test, I'm aware this truck has a iffy gearbox. You know. And you know, this this only proves and a lot will depend on your examiner at the end of the day. So don't take what I'm saying as gospel, but it does prove that they do use a bit of common sense. As I admit, I, I missed the odd gear and I was trying to get it in at one stage. But as long as you don't allow the truck to roll back, do anything dangerous, you'll be fine. But if you're not comfortable with a manual at all, or you, 
you know, if your school's got two, got an option between a menu and auto, maybe ask if they got a taste today and ask on the taste today to try the manual if possible. That could be an option. Go once you find the school you want to go to, and as I said, if they got a choice, ask them, say, look, can I try a manual? You know, maybe for a day. You know. And at least then you would have been shown how the manual operates at the very least. You know, out of that one day, you have a rough idea then, even if you go actually no, I want to go on automatic and do my test on that. Yeah, do the rest of my training on that, you know. That's okay, that's all cool. I'm not saying you should do manual, but I am a sort of advocate to you should at least try a manual. At least. It's not a magical thing shifting and changing between high and low and half gears and all that. It might sound complicated, but I mean when you first do it, yeah, you'd be like where do I start off with and all that. It's not a mystic thing. It's not a, really an art form. There is an art to get really good with it. I hope it, I'm not the best. They will open it all day long. You know, I'm reasonable with it. I'm not the best. I still make mistakes now and again when my gear changes, the manual. Which only proves even after five years, and yes, I've been on autos in between as well, and had the old manual, but, you know, he improves, even the drivers driven for a little bit will still be a bit iffy the gears now and again. But the key thing is, as long as you're not dangerous, you're under control all the time, and you have nothing to worry about. But, as I said, I'm a big advocate. If you can, at least try a manual with somebody who knows how manuals work and all that. Because then, at the very least, you would have hopefully got some hints and tips and at least experienced it with some experience instead of maybe hopping in and having a driver. You, I know, yes, your instructor is probably something you don't overly know, but you get to know about the week a bit better and they get to know you. Then, you know, a driver who might not be bothered, he might be being asked by transport quick to his driver over show and use the manual. I'm not saying all drivers be like that, and that's a lot of drivers do learn off other drivers how to use the manuals. And you do have some extra drivers who teach you everything, or the bulk of what you need to know. And there'll be others though who will be like, yeah, yeah, just lob it into your third and just work up from there, just back moves it up, back moves it down, da 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 da, don't forget the clutch, see ya. <laughs> you know. And don't, you know, don't let that put you off masking though. You know, if you get to workplace and you only maybe touch a manual once or never, just ask. There's bound to be one person who'll help you out. Bound to be. And as I said, don't rush, don't rush yourself. You will be on, on some days, you'll be feeling like under pressure, and there'll be other days that you'll be living the dream. And a lot of it is also to find what type of work suits you. What type of work you enjoy doing. You know, is it tramping, is it day work, is it night, night work, is it flats, is it curtsiders, is it bulkers, is it tankers, you know, so on and so forth. Is it abnormal loads? I mean, you, I think you have to get some following training to the proper abnormal load stuff, but, you know, you never know. You might get the opportunity to have a go, get the training. And I suggest if you do, take it, you know. And as I said, I hopefully this video has been helpful. I know it's been me not ranting on, but I felt that I had to add a few examples of my driving, you know. I, mean, I, I never claimed to be the most experienced driver. I said I've still got a lot to probably learn, you know. I'm probably in driving terms still young and naive in a way. You could probably argue in, in some certain contexts in a way. But the key thing is, is always to keep an open mind even when you get to your five year, your ten year, 
your 20 year, 30 year driving, you know, you never know it all. And there'll be always that one thing that, you know, you think you've seen it all and you haven't. And also with legislation that can change on the spot and when you're in, you know, you have to be able to learn it on, you know, as fast as it comes out or gets enforced. You know, so obviously learn your legislation as well as you can. There is grey areas, but don't worry about that. Focus on, you know, yourself to start off with. Ask if you get stuck. You know, I'll, open, I'll probably overhammered this massively, but that's a that point, and it's a point that you think, yeah, 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 I'll ask, I'll ask. Then you'll have make your first mistake, and you think, actually, I could have asked. No, and you are going to make mistakes, don't get me wrong, you will make mistakes. But you can't ask all the time, but there'll be times that you go think back and you go, actually, I should have taken a step back there and asked or thought about it a bit more. Well, especially when you first get used to doing some really technical manoeuvres and some try When you're in the yards, if you see your drive around and you're not too sure what your back's doing, maybe get them to help you guide you in or, you know, so that I'm a new driver, I'm trying to get it into there and my doing the right way. Sometimes I might say, no drive, just go out, spin yourself around, come at it the other way, driver. You'll find it a lot easier, mate. And actually, sometimes simple things like that from other drivers will make you think more, go, actually, I could take a bit from this and actually, oh, that other yard I'm struggling with, let's try it there, because that's the same sort of angle or similar angle. And you might go, actually, ah, I've just learned something there. Or thought about the reversing. And that leads to another thing. Just don't make things difficult for yourself. Just don't make things difficult. If you need to do some shunts, take some shunts. It's better to take some shunts than make a mistake. You know. And there is that ego thing out there, some drivers go, oh, you shouldn't shunt, any driver does want to shunt, oh. No, ignore that, that's a silly stuff. I hope you admit, I shunt still, now and again when I need to. You know, wherever I need to, I will shunt. And sometimes that's just to perfect my straight line into a bay, if needs be, <laughs> you know. I might be faffing about to get it that that much more if I wanted to, you know. There's no shame in shunting, as long as you're not taking the mick. And, you know, if you're not sure, get out and look when you're manoeuvring. Walk where you're going to reverse the truck into or get the truck into if you can. And sometimes if you can walk, walk to where you go want to put the truck in, obviously I'm not asking you to walk miles and all that but reasonably going to have a look at what so that's how it driver put your truck reverse it around that corner for me driver that's a blind sider i'd rather get one to go and have a quick walk around find something then then find something when i'm reversing in and hit it because that person has told you to do something so i'm just focusing on the junction here as well, these junctions are a bit deceptive with cars. You know, don't take anything for granted as well. Yeah, as I said, that falls into it, that does. You know, I, I've, I've walked, walked around and checked areas out and realised there was something in those areas. And actually, thinking back, if I didn't, you know, there may have been a good chance that if I took what the chat's words were granted and I reversed blindside around a corner onto a blind bay, I could have hit somebody or something or another vehicle, you know. And also, it just gives you a lay of the land, so you go, actually, that's there, I'll be aware of that when I reverse around. Or you might go, and actually, it's not as bad as it looks. 
looks fine. As long as I get around that corner, everything will be easy peasy. Could be like that, and sometimes there's nothing to worry about. You look around, it's all clear, as I said, you know, nothing to worry. But it's best to spend an extra few minutes to check, and same when you're reversing in any format. If you can't see what the back of your trailer's doing, and you know there could be stuff around there, get out, have a look, see how far you're off it. Yeah, there's no shame in it. Get out as many times as you need to. As I said, if you can get somebody to give you a hand as well, to a degree, get to watch your back. Even if you just say something like, just shout if I get near to anything, you know. Better than nothing. So yeah, so hopefully this video's been helpful. I hopefully have, well, probably have gone on for a wee bit now. I'd like to say a massive thank you very much for watching. If you, as I said earlier, if you have any comments, any suggestions, or you have any, if you're an experienced driver, you know, any of your advice, maybe when you were a new driver, or if something happened, anything of interest, that could be some good advice. You know, anything like that. If I've missed something, I probably have missed something. That probably is another bit of big advice I should have put across as well. But hopefully that's like the backbone of what really you need to know when you're a brand spanking new class one or even two driver. You know, it is daunting when you first stay on the industry. You, you know, as I said, you can be throwing the paperwork and the keys. That's it. See ya. Have a nice day, driver. And you're still fresh out the door. And you're like, uh, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> How do I find the truck? How do I find the trailer? No, and it's quite often the things that you don't think of that will catch you out. And to as drivers have been driving for a while, all for a very long time, it's very easy to look at a new driver and go, oh. But if you take a step back, we all all were there one day, you know, we all were that naive dr new driver, first day in the yard, did no back back end of a trailer, you know, did know where where the train numbers were or how they worked or how you know etiquette of getting on the bay was and stuff like that and that you know if you're an experienced driver 5 10 20 30 40 years whatever you know and you see a driver who's you know struggling think that could be a new driver that could be a new driver or a driver with not very much experience maybe go out and give them a hand at uh, being sat in the cab and you know smirking but at the same time a hundred drivers getting out to help one person that's way too much if you know, long as, you know if you see somebody else getting a hand happy days you know, it can come daunting you know you remember your first day of and you see all the drivers on the bay sort of staring at you you know waiting for you to make that one mistake or to laugh at you when you have to shunt <laughs> The pressure you felt, but no pressure. The first time getting to to a driver's lounge, a load of drivers sat around, and you're sort of like walking in, going, wondering who to go and speak to, what to say, and you know. You know, I always think, no, we were all there at one stage. And all I'm saying is be open-minded when you see a new driver. I hope say, even if you know they're a new driver, let them crack on. But if they need some help, don't be shy. Especially if they ask for help. You know, if they ask for help, give them some help. A bit of five minutes out of your day could save that guy's life or his career, potentially. Because you can't learn everything when you're doing your training. Yeah, so thank you very much. I hope, oh, I know I've already sort of semi ended this already. But uh, thank you very much for watching yet again. And to all those who recently have subscribed, a massive thank you very much yet again. It is seriously appreciated, and as I said, it keeps motivating me to create more content. 
if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing you know and hitting that bell icon to hear if I have released anything new of relevant information um, also check out my Facebook and Twitter hopefully I've been informative maybe a bit over informative I do apologize and hopefully you have a nice day and hopefully I'll see you out on the road somewhere Enjoy. Hoover and out.